If there's one thing we can count on, it's changes in fish's behavior throughout the seasonal period. As cold-blooded creatures, fish are extremely sensitive to their environment and are always looking for the most ideal water temperature, cover, and food source. For example, as water temperatures plummet during late fall, fish relocate to areas with more stability. Largemouth bass are no exception. As fall feeding frenzies come to a halt, bass vacate flats and consolidate on sharp breaks or deeper, warmer water areas, moving little and only feeding opportunistically as water gets even cooler. In a nutshell, if the food isn't in front of their face, a lot of times they won't eat. Their mission, conserve energy. But bass can still be caught during the colder months, and lots of them, if you just adjust your program to match their slow motion behavior. On today's Edge, Al and James Lindner break out the bass gear for a late season largey run on a Midwestern natural lake. This is really fun, yeah, you know, when you get, the thing about this time of year, these fish bunch up so heavy. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. I got him. Yeah, yeah. Can't tell for sure. I got a lot of line up. My, it's gro it growed up a little bit, yeah. <laughs> Look at how much I meant. I had a lot of line out jerking. You know, really a lot. I can see a few more down here. Getting the bait. Oh, she's a good one. She's a good fish. Down there. Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah. Come here, fishy. Boy, are they heavy, Jim. Oh, whoa, look at that one, Jim. Man, Ooh, oh man. That's a real fat so. What a fish. Here's the deal. It's late fall. Jim and I, obviously, are bass fishing. Let me get her back. Nice fish, huh? We're bass fishing. And uh, our water temperatures, about 46 degrees, 45 in some areas, maybe pushing 47 in another. This time of the year, when that water starts getting in that 45, 46 degree range and keeps going down, uh, we'll catch fish right up to ice up, up north, these northern strain bass. Your presentation, meaning your choice of lures, gets real, real, real simple. In fact, this time of the year, the choice of baits to catch a largemouth bass up north is the simplest it is all year long. Handful of baits, and you can load the boat with them. Mm. That's a better one there. Yeah, maybe not. Oh yeah. yeah, that's a good one there. Come here, buddy. Guys are definitely doing some eating. They know in the not so distant future, things are gonna get sort of cold around here for like the next six months. <laughs> Look at that. Fish hit it a couple of different times. You know, that's one thing, their metabolic rate and talking about understanding the nature of uh, largemouth bass. You know, we actually have these northern strain, but southern strain bass don't feed that well when that water gets really cold. I shouldn't say southern strain, but Florida strain, but these northern strain fish, it's amazing. We do uh, catch a lot of bass right up to ice out. I mean, really tremendous catches at this time of the year. You can see the fish are really pretty tight to the bottom. There's, an, there's one. <laughs> huh. Wow. Boy, these guys are sort of inactive right now. Seems like the mood right now, it seems like the jig is the, uh, the answer, that really slow drop speed. It's got to sit in their strike zone for a long period of time. Well, it wasn't that long ago that these fish were 
you know, like two weeks ago and the water was in the mid 50s. Rattle baits, crank baits, spinner baits all over up on the flats was really the deal. But as that water temperature really starts slowly creeping down in fall, the fish, the fish really start gathering in really specific locations. And then their mood changes so much too. You know, their strike zone just starts to go like this, you know, where it used to be like this. Now it's like this, you know. When that water gets real cold, like this where Jim was talking about that, you know, the, the strike zone shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. Yeah, 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 you, you know, when they were active and, and the water was in the low 50s, they'd run and chase down a bait. Colder it gets, you almost got to put that bait in front of their nose and leave it sit there. Yeah, you, you know, you got to really slow things down. You know, they will not chase a bait. Long time with a jerk bait or a smaller, lighter jig. You know, that just kind of sits there. We're sitting on quite a few out. fish. You I got rigged one up jerking on yeah, you? Yeah, first cast. <laughs> How do you like that? I like it. I went to a. You're getting those. Oh, I don't what think we were big, getting yeah, them. That's a big hog, boy. Yeah, we weren't getting those jerk baits deep enough with the uh, bait casting rod. I went to a spinning rod with 832 braid, eight pound tass. Big gal. With a just little floral carbon leader in that way, you can go and get the bait That's a lot deeper and for. it didn't take long. That goes to show you, you know, you say, think, you know, how much line can make a difference, but it can make a dramatic difference on how and where the bait is moving in the water column. Look at that. Look at that. There we go. Ooh. Many things have been said about rough waters, but few things have been said about a smooth ride. The revolutionary Smooth Moves Ultra is a mechanical suspension system that features a four spring design and a hydraulic shock, providing the most comfortable and durable ride on the market. Through passion, tenacity, and the right equipment, you can overcome even the roughest waters. Say goodbye to winter and hello to spring for your outdoor needs at Mills Fleet Farm, where you'll save with low fleet prices. Prepare for outdoor entertaining. There's a new selection of barbecue grills and new styles of patio furniture that offer comfort and durability. Shop now for wheelbarrows, rakes, and lawn tractors. Plus, be ready to tackle outdoor projects with a new log splitter, chainsaw, or power tool. For everything outdoors, it's Mills Fleet Farm. We are outdoors. There's no place like this. Yes! <laughs> Fishermen are always looking for an edge. Lures, locations, the right equipment. Here's one edge mechanics have been using for decades to help engines run smoother and last longer. It's Seafoam Motor Treatment. Seafoam works to do a few important things exceptionally well. Cleans dirty engine deposits, lubricates critical engine areas, and helps to protect the entire fuel system from harmful fuel residues. To me, this stuff is like a miracle in a can. This segment is brought to you by Big Bite Baits, designed to bring the big bite to your line. You know, when you look at uh, jerk baits, they come in a, a variety of different uh, styles. And one thing that's really vitally important when you select the jerk baits based on the time time of the year is how the bait moves in the water. Not this particular bait is a shadow wrap deep, and this is actually a slow sinking bait. You have an X wrap that's a suspending bait. Uh, they make a shadow wrap shad that's a floating bait. And the interesting thing is at specific times of the year, individual baits have really specific strengths. And right now when you look at what we're doing here, because it's really pretty deep, we're trying to catch these bass out of anywhere between 10 and as deep as, you know, 15 foot of water with this slow sinking bait, you know, you make a really long cast, I'm going to let this bait sink down 10, 12, 
you tend to 12 count and slowly start fishing that bait in. Obviously, if I was fishing a suspending bait or a floating bait, I could never get that bait to that depth of water. That's one thing, you know, you look when you buy jerk baits, you want to have sinking, floating, as well as suspending baits. And each one's do have different times of the year when that's absolutely the best option. And this one, at this particular time, slow sinking because I'm trying to get the bait deep. Oh, this is a big fish, Jim. Look at how much line I got out. She's coming way up out there. We're just kind of strolling. <laughs> this is a good one. This is one of them big gals. Uh, we're actually pulling with that trolling motor. No, I got us on spot lock here. Oh, now you do, yeah. but I mean, this is a good fish. This is one yeah. of them big fish. Real big, like a fiver. I, I gotta say, she's could be that big. I don't know, she's pulling really hard. No, it's a good one, not, she's not, not a fiver, but she's a good one. <laughs> Boy, some of those fish are really down deep, deep, and holy mackerel, look at that. <laughs> this is really fun, yeah, you know, when you get, the thing about this time of the year, these fish bunch up so heavy. Yeah, yeah, you know, they start getting together in big, big schools, and they'll stay that way. This is the magic temperature, around 45, 46, where they bunch up so good. You know, we're talking about this handful of baits that we prefer, and I mean, it really is a handful. And uh, uh, these are the baits and a little bit about uh, 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 the rods and reels that we use for these particular baits. And it is about as simple as it can get. Chilly water, and when I mean chilly, I'm talking water temperatures of 45 degrees and dropping. That's when your bait selection really gets pretty small, just like the fish's strike zone. This is going to be short and sweet. Number one, a jig like the Terminator finesse jig, tipped with a big bite swimming craw. Keep the size as light as you can get away with and still maintain some bottom content. Drop speed is critical at this time frame. Number two, the Rapala Shadow Wrap, deep or shallow. It all depends on the depth of the fish. The big thing is you want the jerk bait shape with a slow sink. The Shadow Wrap is a one of a kind. You can count the bait down, get it to the depth, and make it dance in place. And that's what triggers the bites. Number three, a VMC Spin Shot and Big Bite Shaky Squirrel. This bait is so effective because of its efficiency. You can fish it right on the spot, on the spot. And that subtle plastic stays right in the strike zone. Now with all of these presentations, you can fish with a bait casting or a spinning rod, whatever you're most comfortable with. Jim is primarily fishing with a seven foot, one inch St. Croix Legend Tournament Series and a 2500 Daiwa Ballistic with eight pound test Suffolk 832. It's a white braid and he's got a 10 pound floral leader. The white line allows you to line watch for those delicate bites. I'm fishing with a St. Croix Legend Elite 6 foot 10 inch rod with a 6.3 Daiwa Tatula reel and 10 pound suffix fluorocarbon. Whichever you decide to fish with, you ain't gonna go wrong. Oh, I don't know, it just started sliding downstream here. I don't know, I don't think he's a biggie. Huh. They know, grow up when they're getting near you. Yeah, that's a, the interesting thing yeah, is, is right now we're sort of slipping downstream. Actually, it's almost a uh, control drifting with the uh, trolling motor, and we just threw the jerk baits out in back of the boat, and it's just sort of slowly blowing with the wind under a control drift, and just to get the baits out there and move along really slowly. It's one way that you can present a jerk bait that can really be pretty hot technique at time particularly to get the baits into deeper water you know what I mean where you can get these baits that's one thing it wasn't that long ago before these sinking baits came you know jerk baits only were really effective to you know eight ten foot of water you know if you had really super clear water when the fish were really hot and active but now you can take these baits and we actually Al and I we've actually pounded big smallmouths out of 14 15 foot of water you know, slip you know. drifting like we're, we're like we're doing here is something we've done for wa walleyes. Yeah, you know, for many years. Jimmy's Lund here. Jimmy's bass boat. Lund bass bass boat. We're about 18, 18 feet apart. The boat is much longer than that. He's holding the tip of the boat in about 12, 11, 12. 
I'm back here sometimes in 14 to 16, you're covering quite a swash of water by slip drifting with these baits. And like you said, you can get much deeper with it with a lot of line out, yeah, yeah, you know, and, and control drifting a brake line like we're on now. Got the perfect wind for it. Walleye tricks for bass fishermen. <laughs> <laughs> At Mercury, when something's worth doing, it's worth doing boldly. So we ran our newest engine, the equivalent of four times around the Earth, at wide open throttle. Because that's what it takes to help you go boldly too. Introducing the all new V6 Mercury four strokes. Lighter, quicker, more efficient. Mercury, go boldly. Whoever coined the phrase, less is more, wasn't much of a fisherman. He probably talked himself into a V6 when he could have got a V8, settled for 100 horsepower instead of 250, and went home empty-handed when he should have doubled down. Introducing the Solix series. From mega imaging to auto chart live to cross touch, Solix has all of fishing's most innovative technologies on our biggest screen ever. Because more is more. Only from Humminbird. Lund Boats has two smoking deals for making memories this summer. Lund 1650 Rebel XS is an incredible boat at an incredible price. This boat is filled with features like side and center rod lockers, aerated live well, and a heavy duty trailer with fold away tongue. Add the optional flip up seating and ski pylon for family fun. Or choose Lund 1625 Fury XL. It has all the fish catching features you'd expect from Lund at a jaw dropping price. For more information and a free catalog, go to LundBoats.com. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. You can see what I'm doing here. We're all, all I'm doing is just bumping the trolling motor in and out, and the wind is blowing us right down the length of this particular little ledge drop in here. And it actually goes from like five foot down to like 10 foot, and there's a little like a extension before it actually starts rolling off into 12, 14 foot of water. It's one thing, you know, in this really cold water like this, we're not doing really, you know, where you, a lot of times when you're fishing a jerk bait, you, where you really want that bait jumping from right to left really dramatically. In this really cold water, you don't really do that that much. A lot of times you're just pulling the bait and it's going to brrrr, brrrr. You know, we're just not really jacking the bait really hard. Colder water, you can see how that, uh, the braided line actually transmits. You can see the vibration path of the bait. We just had fish after fish after fish. I don't know how many fish are in the school along this break, but it's a, it's a lot. I'm gonna motor back up, Jim, to, to that tighter pocket. This break that we're on this drop off goes in like this, and it comes into that hill area with all those rocks. This time of the year, one of the types of spots that we look for a lot are deep drop-offs that are like funneled in, particularly if rock are down on a slide in these natural lakes. You can catch fish in a few other areas, but that kind of spot is always a mainstay. You'll always find something there. We're gonna change rods. I'm gonna go to the finesse jig on the drag. You can see that's a bass. I got him that the way time. He marks. <laughs> I think there's more of them in deeper water. You know that the way we're holding, I'm up like on the top. You know, in that 10 or 12, 11. It seems like you are, you're off in that. What are you? What are you back there? 12, 14. 13, 14. Yeah. Feels like a little bit better one, Jim. Oh yeah, nicer. Oh boy, that's way a, better, pi a nice. pig. Way better. Way better. Whoa. Way better. That's a big boy. Yeah. Holy <laughs> mackerel. <laughs> This is a big, a big toad. Come here, baby. 
<laughs> Look at that one, huh? Wow. James, James, James. When this bite goes on, I'm telling you, you can really whack some monsters on it. Really, really do a job on it. Look at that. What a fish, huh? All right, baby, go ahead. Oop. Yeah. Boy, there's a bunch of us sitting. You sitting on them? There's a bunch of them sitting right underneath us. This is my spot. Right here. My thinking spot. My fishing spot. My spot, not yours. This is where I go. For release. And for catch and release. Where no one can find me. And fish can't hide from me. This is my spot. And I ain't going nowhere. Yeah? Stop working right now! Look outside. Is this spreadsheet weather? No, it's not. This is fishing weather, so stop clicking, get out there, and catch a bass! Stop what you're doing and start fishing Rapala Ripstop. Here for angling bugs. I'm Tony Roach. Ray Rolstone. Lee Talkin here. Brad Durick up here on the Red River. Muskegon River. Leech Lake. Devil's Lake. Beautiful Lake Vermillion. Black. Top water has been really, really fun. Go to the plastics. Bath like this. A lot of wallies like that. Giant bluegills. From Sturgeon Bay. Lake Sakakawea. Lake Winnie region. Northern Wisconsin. Good luck, everybody. Have fun. Check us out on the web. Current up to date fishing info from the best anglers in the Midwest. Learn from the pros at anglingbuzz.com. Can't get enough Angling Edge? Wish you could learn more than you saw on TV? You can. Angling Edge DVDs dive deep into fish catching techniques that couldn't fit on air. It's like extra innings or overtime of Angling Edge. Choose from dozens of titles featuring your favorite freshwater fish. Purchase five DVDs at the incredible low price of $25. That's five DVDs for just 25 bucks. Purchase two sets and get free shipping too. Visit anglingedge.com to place your order. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. Boy, there's a bunch of us sitting. You sitting on them? There's a bunch of them sitting right underneath us. We gotta pull up again and I'll spot lock and we can make long cast downwind. And it just really makes really nice control with jerk baits like this because we can actually really position the baits where you know we're seeing them on the hummingbird and then we're repositioning the boat casting getting the baits down there and slowly sort of snapping the baits right through that exact area where we saw the fish out the technology available to us today for fishermen is just amazing and the most one of the most amazing things jim i've seen in many years and we've been in this game all our life is that all trucks with a cable drive trolling motor and the accuracy of that spot lock unit. What you're able to do with it, if you're a bass fisherman, if you're a fisherman, period, they, they've got this thing so fine-tuned, it really is incredible. Yeah, once you start, you get a couple days using it, you can't fish without it anymore. It's, it's, it's something, it is something. What's the most amazing pieces of equipment, I think, to come along since the mapping system in a hummingbird along with side imaging. And, and this, if I had to rate them in importance, that would be it right now. You know, right now you can see I actually hit spot lock, which is I hit this button, it automatically pins the boat into position. You can see the anchor on. When you look at the depth finder, here's the boat position. See these coordinates? Those are the schools of bass that we're casting at. I'm holding the boat, it's in a lock position. We're fan casting let our jerk baits down to here, letting them sink down to the bottom, and we're slowly snapping them in between these two coordinates, which are probably 25, 30 feet apart, but there's a big school of bass right there. There's another one. Good one again, Jim. Yeah. Look at it. It is magic. We spotted those fish. You see that stump, that big stump there? He spotted that school of fish there. We pulled up. He spot locked with that Ultrax where we could make long cast with the wind and get that bait down there. 
and it's showtime, baby. It's showtime. Another good one, Jim. Coming up, let's see, this is, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, for 45, 45, 46 degree water, they're, st they're still pounding pretty darn good. That's fish still breaking water, thinking she's, thinking it's summertime. You know, it wasn't that many years ago that people would say, you know, when that water got below, you know, b below 50 degrees, the fish quit biting. Yeah, 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 you know, up north here, yeah, yeah, you know, we learned every year a little bit more about these, these northern strain bass, cold water fishing, how to fish the fish, where the fish go to. And we catch these fish right up the ice up. In fact, right after ice up, we can still catch them through the ice. We're learning how to do that with some consistency. Hey, what do you think about when you look at the evening news on television or read the headlines in your local paper? Huh. Not a whole lot of uplifting stuff, is there? You know, I just read a recent article in Decision Magazine. It was written by Billy Graham. As we sit here today, I believe Mr. Graham is in his mid-90s. And uh, uh, there's no question he is one of the most influential Christian leaders that ever walked the face of the earth to, today that is alive now. An amazing man that has touched the lives of so many people in so many different ways. I'd just read you a little snippet here that really caught my interest. I once asked the university professor what he thought our greatest need was. He considered it carefully before he answered. I could give you a variety of answers all the way from tax relief to disarmament. I may surprise you because I'm not a religious man, but I believe that the greatest need that we have at this hour is a spiritual awakening that will restore individual and collective morals and integrity throughout the nation. Goes on to say, a hostile world is seething with hatred, intrigue, lawlessness, and godless aggression. The wicked prosper, and in many areas of the world, of the, world the righteous suffer. People are confused, unstable, unhappy. Scarcely, if ever, has economic prosperity been accompanied by such widespread unhappiness, lawlessness, and rebellion. The heart of the world is aching for peace for a reality from God. The prophet Habakkuk once stood in the midst of a people who had been showered with every conceivable blessing, but who had lost their spiritual sanity. And he cried out, O Lord, revive your work in the midst of the years. That's the heart cry of thousands of people everywhere. It's our greatest need today. Man, oh man, oh man. When I read that, I, I said, look around, this is it. We need people to turn back to the Word of God, to open their hearts, get on their knees, because there's a lot, a lot of bad stuff, and that is probably the only hope that we have, I believe, is in this book. Hey, from all of us here at The Edge, have a good fishing season. We'll see you on the water. Hey, I want to take a moment to thank you for watching, and if you really like what you see, we got a whole lot more. So check us out at any one of these online outlets. You know, in fishing, there are good days and there are great days. Time is just a wink from the Almighty. We plan, target, rig, and play the game like everyone else.